What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. We're going to do a different kind of episode today which is a slightly more hypothetical one but I'm kind of excited to explore it a little bit. Before we start though if you like this style of video then make sure you click that like button below and I'm going to do more of them for you. Also thank you. Right the Megalodon. Now I know that loads of you watching these videos at home are big Megalodon fans and so am I. This was an awesome shark species. I do say was there as Megalodon is well and truly extinct. I really do sound like a broken record every time I say that. <laughs> the Meg did go extinct a few million years ago though and hasn't been around since. But today we're going to take a look at whether the Megalodon could even survive in today's modern oceans. What would be some of the challenges that it would face? What would it feed on and where would it live? What would happen if you literally plonked a three and a half million year old Megalodon into the ocean today? Okay, so we've just picked up our Megalodon and dropped it in the ocean. Now, straight off the bat, can our Megalodon even survive today's water temperatures? So back when Megalodon was alive and was swimming around in our prehistoric oceans of the Miocene and Pliocene era, the average sea surface temperature was warmer. In the Miocene, it's thought that sea surface temperatures were about three to four degrees warmer than they are today. And then deeper water temperatures could have been between eight to 10 degrees warmer than they are now. Then we entered the Pliocene era and temperatures cooled a little bit, but but they were still about two to three degrees warmer than they are now. A few degrees warmer doesn't seem that much warmer, but it can have massive wide ranging impacts on marine ecosystems. Back during the Pliocene era, when sea temperatures started cooling by just a few degrees, it caused mass extinctions across a whole host of species. The changing ocean during that period actually wiped out about 55% of all marine mammals. So you can see that it had a huge effect. So straight away, our Megalodon would be struggling a little bit with today's ocean temperatures. But I think what's interesting is that those two degrees warmer are what's being predicted for our oceans towards the end of this century. The oceans are literally warming up to temperatures that were similar back when Megalodon was swimming around in our oceans millions of years ago. So I actually think from a temperature perspective, our Megalodon probably would be just about okay, provided that it stayed maybe towards the equatorial tropical regions, at least for the time being anyway. It's thought that Megalodons were mainly found towards the warmer coastal regions of the prehistoric ocean and we know this because that's where their fossilized teeth seem to crop up the most. It's also probably where they fed and gave birth in those nice, safe, shallow, warm waters. So if we dropped one in the ocean today, we're probably gonna have to drop it towards the coasts of Africa maybe, or the Meso-Caribbean, or even Indonesian waters. It's pretty limited as to where it's probably gonna be able to survive from a temperature perspective. Now, there's a faction of people online who believe megalodons to still be alive, living in our deep oceans undetected. Mostly because because of stupid films, online documentaries, and those ridiculous Megalodon Still Alive videos that I like to debunk on YouTube. <laughs> But the temperatures down there are so, so cold, somewhere between one to three degrees Celsius, which is pretty much nearly freezing. And no, deep water thermal vents are not going to be able to warm up the surrounding water enough so that megalodons can live down there. Stop it. <laughs> so we definitely couldn't drop our megalodon down in the Mariana Trench, considering it spent all of its life living in warm, coastal, tropical waters. Yes, okay, megs were thought to be endothermic, which means they are partially warm-blooded. And that meant that they could do some of their hunting in cooler waters, but not the icy cold temperatures of our deep oceans. Overall, I think of all the things that we're going to discuss today from this hypothetical situation, megalodons probably would just about be able to survive in today's ocean temperatures. Just. And obviously it only applies to a few very specific regions on Earth and the vast majority of the oceans it just wouldn't be able to survive in. Not for at least another hundred years anyway. Now next up, we're onto a really important factor on the likelihood of our megalodon being able to survive, and that's food. What's our megalodon going to eat? It's tough to know exactly what they fed on a few million years ago, but based on nitrogen isotope research, we know that they sat pretty high in the food chain, which means they probably ate whatever they wanted, within reason. And depending on the size of the individual megalodon, that was probably ancient whales, turtles, dolphins, other fish species, including other megalodons. We know that these guys had pretty high calorific needs because of their massive size and the way they moved around. And it's thought they needed to eat somewhere between two to three thousand pounds of food every single day just to sustain themselves scoffers. So what have we got in today's ocean that our megalodon can feed on? Well, 
pretty much all of the above. We've got large whales, dolphins, sea turtles, and other large fish species. But are there going to be enough of these to sustain our megalodon? And are they going to be in a high enough abundance in the regions where our megalodon has to live? So modern whale species are widespread in today's oceans. They're pretty much literally found everywhere. Although most whale species generally tend to prefer the cooler waters of the northern and southern hemispheres. But a lot of them do migrate towards those equatorial regions in the middle to give birth at certain times of the year. So what better thing to feed on than some whales that have entered this equatorial region where our megalodon's living and are giving birth to easy pickings for a megalodon. Although because this is happening at only certain times of the year, there are going to be large swathes of time where the whales just simply aren't there. And because of the temperature restraints on our megalodon, it wouldn't be able to follow these whales to the polar regions where they spend a large amount of time feeding in plankton-rich waters. For an animal that's got to consume somewhere between two to three thousand pounds of food per Per day, I just don't think it's going to be able to consistently do that enough to survive. If it wasn't feeding on large whales, think about how many dolphins or sea turtle our megalodon's going to have to consume to sustain itself. I just think it would really, really struggle. The other question we're having to pose here is that are we dropping just one megalodon into the ocean or are we talking about a whole population? If it's a healthy population of megs, there's no way there's going to be enough food to go around all of those megalodons. But if it was just one individual, it perhaps might be able to find enough food to survive for a little bit at least. When we think of whales as well, these animals are nowhere near the numbers that they were even 200 years ago. Humans nearly wiped whales off the face of the earth in the 1800s to the point where most species were endangered. Yes, there are a few species and populations that are starting to recover now, but they're still nowhere near pre-industrial revolution numbers. And then when we think of whale numbers a few million years ago, today's numbers aren't even close. The Miocene Ocean was absolutely teeming with marine mammal life and whale numbers would have been ridiculously high back then. Megalodons during that period would have been spoilt for choice on what they wanted to eat, whereas in today's oceans, they'd be a lot more limited. So from a food perspective, I think we start running into a little bit more trouble as to whether our megalodon could survive today. And importantly, this is also presuming that our megalodon isn't competing against anything for that food, which we know wouldn't be the case. Our megalodon would be be competing with a whole host of other species for prey, including other sharks. Researchers showed that one of the reasons megs might have gone extinct is because they were outcompeted by the ancestors of great white sharks. These ancient great whites were smaller and didn't have to eat as much to survive. They were also more agile, which meant they could catch smaller prey items like seals much more easily than a hefty megalodon. So today, megs would probably struggle to find an ecological niche for themselves to survive. To put it in a slightly odd way, there's simply no room for them. They'd end up being outcompeted, probably just like they did millions and millions of years ago when they went extinct. Right, so we've got a megalodon likely swimming around the equatorial tropical regions of our oceans, but it's probably not able to find enough food to sustain itself. What are some of the other challenges that this animal might be facing in the ocean today? So in its isolated little pocket of tropical ocean, I don't really think it's going to have that many natural predators. The only thing that I can really think that might challenge our megalodon would be a highly coordinated pod of killer whales. Although it would be pretty rare to find killer whales in the tropical oceans, it does happen from time to time. They're probably the only wild animal that I think might be able to bring down our lone megalodon, but it's pretty unlikely. On the other hand, one of the major challenges it's going to have to face, which is a problem that many marine species are struggling to deal with in our modern oceans, and that's humans. Humans pose a massive strain on marine animals, whether that be through hunting and killing them or damaging the habitat in which they live. Can you imagine the amount of people that would likely want to head out to try and catch and kill this megalodon? Sadly, it's probably going to be a pretty high number. What if the meg started attacking and sinking boats for some reason? There's no way the governments of this world would sit by and let that happen, and they'd probably give the all clear to go and take down this animal. I just don't think we'd be able to share our oceans with with a massive prehistoric predator, the human wildlife conflict would be way too high. Again, we're obviously speaking hypothetically about this here, everyone. There's no way of knowing exactly what would go down. I mean, we're talking about one megalodon. It's gonna die eventually because it's got no other megalodon to mate with and pass on its genes. <laughs> So putting it all together, if we dropped a megalodon in today's ocean, I think it probably would be able to survive initially, but not for very long. And the oceans of today would definitely not be able to support a healthy population of megalodons that could sustain themselves and survive. But what do I know?
I'm more interested to hear what all of you guys at home think on this. Could a Megalodon actually survive in today's ocean? Let me know in the comments. Are there any challenges that they might face that you think I've missed in today's video? I'm super keen to hear all of your thoughts on this one, so let me know. Just a silly little hypothetical shark bites episode for you all to ponder on today. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, if you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel every time you click that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.